Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to Transit Online today. My name is Paige and I hope you guys have been enjoying your school holidays. Today we're going to be talking about a trending topic in our world that's impacting our lives on a daily basis. This series is called Racial Tension and I believe God wants us to see it, care about it and do something about it. We're going to be hearing from some real life experiences with racial tension and I believe stories have the potential to change us and help us to get to know others better and see things in a different way. Let's have a listen. Hi friends, my name's Katie and I'm so excited to hang out with you today because we're gonna talk about something that's so important. It's a trending topic in our world that's impacting all our lives on a daily basis. And I know it's something God wants us to see, to care about and even do something about however we can. But before I tell you what the trending topic is, I have a question for you. Do you like stories? Now, you might not read bedtime stories anymore, but confession, I still love them. I still love to read a good story every night. Maybe you're not into those kinds of stories, but you probably have heard a crazy, funny, or powerful story at least once in your life. In fact, I want you to think of one right now. Maybe you overheard someone at school telling a true story of something that happened to them. Maybe one of your grandparents has that same funny story that they tell over and over and over again. Maybe your best friend has that almost unbelievable story about a life-changing experience. Stories like that can be so interesting that you just can't help but lean in and listen. And that's the thing about stories. They don't just entertain you. They have the potential to change you. They have a way of helping you get to know others better. Stories can help us see things in a different way. That's why today is gonna be a little different than what we usually do around here, because we know the power of stories. So we want you to hear from a few really amazing people in just a minute. In fact, their stories can help us understand that trending topic we're gonna talk about today, and that's racial tension. Race is one of the things we don't get to choose about our lives. It's something we're all born with, and it doesn't change. But throughout history, there have been people who don't understand, accept, or even like people whose race is different than their own. And that causes racial tension, which is simply the struggle or anger that exists between people or groups of different races. Maybe you know this because you've seen stories on the news or online that talk about racial tension in the world. Or maybe you know this because there are members of your family who talk openly about the way they feel about people of different races. Maybe you know this because you've seen it happen at your school, in your neighborhood, or in your community. Maybe you don't really know a lot about racial tension because you actually haven't seen it or experienced it. Or maybe you know it because racial tension is something you experience every single day. No matter what your experience or knowledge of racial tension is, my hope is that after hearing these stories from real people with real experiences, you are challenged to think about it differently. So let's lean in, listen, and learn from these stories. What's up everyone? I'm Caleb and I'm biracial. And for me, that means my mom is white and my dad is black. Growing up biracial, I faced the challenge of not really knowing where I fit in. Sometimes I used to feel like I had to say or do certain things around my black friends and family to be accepted by them. And then I feel like I had to say or do other things around my white friends and family to be accepted by them. I remember a time I was hanging out with some friends and one of them told me, Caleb, you're the whitest black person I know. I had no idea what that meant or even if it was a compliment or insult, but it definitely made me feel uncomfortable because I felt that I had to cancel out one part of me to be accepted by another. There was another time when I was getting ready to take a major test and we had to fill in the option to specify our race. And I joked to a friend that I didn't know which choice I should select. And that friend said, what do you mean? Aren't you just black? Those situations made me feel when it came to race, I had to pick a side, be either black or white. And since my hair and skin color are darker than some biracial people's, I felt like I had to choose to be black because that's how people saw me. I didn't have a problem that my friends thought I was only black, but that wasn't the complete representation of who I am. Here's the thing, 
It can be very uncomfortable when other people try to label you by your race. And in my case, why couldn't I just be accepted for who I was? Like, just Caleb. Hey guys, I'm Jean, and I'm Korean American, which means both of my parents are Korean. And I was born here in the United States. When I was growing up, the school that I went to had people from all different cultures and countries and backgrounds. And a lot of my friends ended up being actually from the Middle East, and we always had the best time. When I was in high school, there was an awful attack on the United States. Some of you might already know what happened on September 11th in 2001, but if you haven't heard, it was the day a group of people from the Middle East crashed airplanes into really important buildings in the United States. Thousands of people suffered and even lost their lives from this attack. It was a really awful time. What made me really sad was how my friends were treated after the attack. People in my school were so mean to my friends who were from the Middle East just because they were of the same race as the people who attacked the country. But my friends didn't even know the people who did it. No one realized that my friends were just as scared as anyone else who lived in the United States. But somehow, it seemed like people blamed my friends for something they weren't even a part of. I knew that my friends were really hurt by the things people said to them, and I knew it was wrong for them to be treated unfairly. But I honestly didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to stand up for my friends. And the truth is, sometimes people don't know how to stand up for others who were treated unfairly because of their race. Even though I did my best to comfort my friends in private, why didn't I just stand up for them in public? I've always wondered, what could I have done to help more? Some of those were really hard for me to hear, but I'm really thankful they were willing to share their experiences. See, that's the thing about stories. They help you see things that you wouldn't have seen or think about something in a way you might not have before. No matter where you fit into all of this, I'm glad you heard these stories. First, so you can know you're not alone in what you're thinking, feeling, or experiencing. See, each person's story is equally important. Each person in these stories we just heard looked different from each other. They all had a completely different experience when it comes to race, but they also all shared something in common. They were all affected by racial tension in real and significant ways. We've only shared a few stories today, but there are so many others we could have heard on this topic. You might even be able to think of a few more examples yourself. Like, what about the story of someone who was unkind? Someone who treated others from different races unfairly? Where do they fit into this? Maybe you've heard someone talking about another race in a negative way. Maybe you've even had negative thoughts about other races because of the things you've heard, seen, or experienced. Those stories are important to talk about too. See, when it comes to race, sometimes our differences cause people to think of others as less than or themselves as better, which is known as bias. If we aren't careful, bias can lead us to treat others differently or poorly, and that's discrimination. When we treat others worse because of a bias, it can cause incredible pain, and ultimately, it can create more racial tension in our world. And here's the truth I want you to know today. Our differences in race don't have to mean something negative. In fact, they shouldn't mean something negative. Why? Well, because God designed race to be a beautiful and unique representation of who God is. Here's how I know. In the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, we get the details of how God created the world. One by one, God made everything we see and experience in the world. And then God made people. And here's what the writer of Genesis said about that. So God created mankind in his own image. Out of all the things God created, people are who reflect God's image. Reflecting God's image means when people see you, they see more of who God is. They see more of who God is in the way you act, the way you talk, the way you treat others, and the way that you are uniquely you. The word mankind in this verse is so important because it means all of humankind. That means there isn't just one person, one group, or one race that better reflects God's image than any other. There isn't one race that points to God more than any other. In fact, together we reflect the image of God. And that's pretty amazing. But 
Unfortunately, you and I both know that sometimes the world doesn't see it this way. Because even though God made each of us to uniquely reflect that image, not all people act as if that's true. Some people treat people of other races like they don't belong. Some people use hurtful words or language toward people who don't look like them. Some people act out in anger or even hate towards other races. And not only do those things cause more racial tension in our world, they're also not reflecting or respecting the image of God in each other. So what do we do about it? If together we reflect the image of God, then how can we better understand how to treat one another like that's true? I think we can find our answer in Jesus. See, knowing Jesus changes everything. It changes the way we see ourselves and others, and it changes the way we treat the people around us, those who look like us, and those who don't. During his time on earth, Jesus showed us what it looks like to treat all people with value and respect. He constantly stood up for and helped people who are hurt, abused, or treated unfairly simply because of who they were. And in doing that, Jesus was not only reflecting God's love to the world, but he was also setting the example for how we should all treat each other too. One of Jesus's followers talked about this in a letter that we can read in the Bible today. I think it's safe to say that this guy knew Jesus pretty well because he was actually Jesus's brother, James. Like Jesus, James grew up in a culture where some people were treated better than others. It was normal. It was so common that they may not have even noticed they were doing it. But because James knew Jesus, he knew there was a better way. So let's take a look at what he said. My dear brothers and sisters, how can you claim to have faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ if you favor some people over others? When James used that word favor, he was talking about something similar to bias. So basically James was saying, how can you say you follow Jesus but still treat some people like they're better than others? Because James knew Jesus set the example. And if we say we have faith in Jesus and wanna follow him, then how we treat people really matters. When we act out of bias or do things that contribute to the racial tension in this world, we're not reflecting what following Jesus really looks like to the world around us. James went on to say this, yes, indeed, it is good when you obey the royal law as found in the scriptures, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you favor some people over others, you are committing a sin. You are guilty of breaking the law. That royal law that James was talking about is part of what Jesus called the greatest or most important commandment, to love our neighbors as ourselves. In other words, to treat people the way we wanna be treated. So if we wouldn't wanna be judged by the color of our skin, we shouldn't judge others that way. If it would hurt us to be called names simply because of who we are, then we shouldn't use those names toward others. If we wouldn't wanna be left out because of our race, then we shouldn't leave others out because of their race. And if we'd want someone to stand up for us, then we need to stand up for the people we see being treated unfairly because of their race. When we follow that command to love our neighbor as ourselves, we are honoring the image of God in them and in ourselves. And if we don't, well, James said that any favor or bias we might show towards others is actually a sin. That means it's something that goes directly against the way Jesus tells us to live. So when it comes to racial tension in our world, we have a responsibility first to see and respect the image of God in every human being. And second, as followers of Jesus, to treat others the way we want to be treated. Because remember, Knowing Jesus changes everything. It makes us different. And that means even if racial tension seems common in our world, it can't be common with us. Remember, together we reflect the image of God. That means every person, no matter their age, gender, or race is important and should be treated with respect. Now, if you've been hurt or mistreated because of your race, I want you to know that's awful and that is not okay. The pain you feel is real. I'm so sorry that's how you've been treated. And I want you to know that here, that's not okay. We are committed to making this a safe place for you to talk about your experiences and to find people who are willing to walk with you and stand beside you through it. And if you're someone who hasn't experienced any bias or poor treatment because of your race, you may feel that this is difficult to understand. 
Maybe like the people James wrote to, you never really noticed this before. Or maybe you're someone who's trying to change the way you treat people or even change your mind about the bias you might've had in the past. That's amazing. And I'm so glad that you're here too, because we want you to be part of this conversation with us. It's so important to listen to people who are willing to share their stories like the ones we heard today. Stories that help us learn and grow and change and understand. So. Remember those stories we listened to earlier? I wanna go back to those for a minute. Let's hear more of what was learned along the way. For anyone who may have felt a little confused like I did in being biracial, I wanna encourage you to embrace everything about the way God made you and others. You don't have to pick a side if you're biracial. All parts of you are unique and that makes you complete. You can just be you accept and appreciate that you are unique. And if you run into people who don't fully understand you, that's okay. You can remind them and yourself what makes you, you. If you've ever felt like me and didn't know what to do when others were being mistreated because of their race, I want you to know how important it is to be brave and speak up for others when you see unfair treatment. Not just because it'll make you a better friend to those you really care about, but it'll also make you a better person overall. It may seem scary or confusing in knowing what the best words to say are, but I guarantee when you stand up for what's right and fair, speaking up is better than staying silent. And you never know, it could mean so much to the ones you stand up for. Those are so good and so challenging for all of us. And I know you have your own story and so do all of your friends. That's why groups are so important. We want these groups to be filled with people who will support you, stand up for you, and stand beside you if you're experiencing racial tension. We want them to be a place where you can ask questions and even begin to change your mind. We want our entire church, not the building, like the people. That means you and everyone you know to reflect the image of God to the world. How? In the way we treat each other, because together we reflect the image of God. I think it's great that we were able to hear about these experiences today because that means we now know we are not alone in what we are thinking, feeling, or experiencing. Together we reflect the image of God and that means that every person, no matter their age, gender, or race, is important and should be treated with respect. So as you head into your week, I want you to think about this. What's one way you can treat everyone like they reflect the image of God? Thanks for listening, guys. Have a wonderful week ahead. Bye.